Hi, this is Keely, and today we're going to talk about capacitors. So these are a couple old capacitors that I want to show you. Modern ones look more like this, and we call them cans when I used to work for industry. But what they are is they store charge, and they do different things in a circuit, but we're mostly going to be concerned with the charge that it stores and how much energy that it stores, and how to figure out the capacitance of one of these things if they're parallel plate capacitors. And that's the basic ones that we start off learning. So what is a capacitor? Well, here's an old one that I'm going to take apart here. And basically, you have two pieces of what we call parallel plate or these metal foils that one would be charged positive, one would be charged negative. And this is a dielectric between them. We're not going to discuss dielectrics in this video, but maybe for another video. And as you can see, these capacitors can get a lot of surface area in order to get a lot of charge built up on them. So we're going to discuss how to find the capacitance of a capacitor, the amount of charge that's on it, and the energy that it's stored, as well as the electric field between the two plates. Okay, let's get started with figuring out how these capacitors work and how to do some calculations with them. All right. A capacitor stores charge, and we're going to mostly talk about a parallel plate capacitor. And its symbol inside a circuit is two parallel lines. Not to be confused with a battery, which a battery is a short and a long line. But a parallel plate capacitor has two equal lines going to it. Okay. Now basically what it is, is we got two metal plates. So this is one metal plate, this is another metal plate, so this is our capacitor and this is our battery. And the long side is positive and the short side is negative. So there's a couple ways you can look at this. One, when you turn on the circuit, our conventional definition of current is to flow a positive charge. So positive charges run out and a positive charge builds up here, but that forces, cause of law of charge, a positive charge here to move over here and so that leaves a negative charge here. And so as positive charges build up on this side, negative charges built up on the corresponding plate on the other side. Another way to look at this is that in this battery, we got an overabundance of positive charges here and an overabundance of negative charges there. When you hook up this parallel plate capacitor, the negative charges here want to get away from each other, so some of them run over here. Positive charges over here want to get away from each other, so some of them run over here. And either way, we build up equal charge on both plates. So, what can we figure out about capacitors? Or what can we calculate? So we've got these equations that have to do with capacitors. We've got figuring out the capacitance, which is the charge over the voltage difference. Uh, capacitance is measured in farads. Charges in coulombs, voltage difference or potential difference is measured in volts. Uh, another way we can actually figure out the capacitance simply from the geometry of the capacitor itself is with this, with K is the dielectric constant, and we're going to use a vacuum for our dielectric, so K is always going to be 1 for us. Uh, the vacuum permeability of space, which is a constant, which is this number, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, and with a nice unit there. A is the surface area of one of the plates, so you don't have to worry about combining both plates. And D is the distance between both plates in meters. And surface area is also in square meters. Now the potential energy that I can store, you can find it one of two ways. It's one half charge times the potential difference. And again, energy is measured in joules. Or the potential energy stored is equal to one half the capacitance times voltage squared. And the way that we can go from one of those equations to the other looks like this. See, we got C equals Q over V. So if I solve that for Q, move the V over, we get CV. So if we plug that in here, U equals 1 half, take Q and plug in CV, times that other V, we get U equals 1 half CV squared. And that's how we get that equation. So they're both the same equation. It's just... One has been solved, so Q is not part of it. 
and the electric field between the plates is equal to E equals the charge divided by the vacuum permeability and the area of the plates. Now what does that electric field look like? If we go back to this picture, the electric field always goes from positive charge to negative charge. So the electric field would be pretty uniform and pretty consistent between the two plates. We might get some edge effects near the edge of the plate, but within the plate, that electric field is pretty much going to be constant. So it's not going to matter if you're really close to one plate or in the middle or really close to the other plate. The electric field is pretty much going to stay constant in that area. Now the unit for capacitance is the farad. And the problem with the farad is farad's rather a large unit. And to have a one farad capacitor is usually at least the size of somewhere around there, if not larger, depending on the dielectric they use and how they build it and such. So a lot of times you're not going to get one that large. We're going to use either micro, nano, or picofarad. So we'll have to look. So if it's got 220 in that Greek letter mu farads, that stands for 220 microfarads. And so what that is, is 220 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. 80 nanofarads in, stands for nano, that would be 80 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. And let's say we got 25 picofarads. That would be 25 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. And so a lot of times we use this as a shorthand instead of using the scientific notation. But make sure you pay attention to that because that will make a drastic change in your answer depending on how large your capacitor is. So micro, negative 6. Nano, negative 9. Pico, negative 12. So let's look at two problems where we're going to figure out the charge, the energy, um, the electric field between the two plates. Let's see what we can do and figure out as much as we can in two problems. We've got two 2 meter by 3 meter plates separated by a 2 millimeter gap, which we're going to say is a vacuum. We're going to figure out the capacitance. We're going to figure out when we plug it into a 12 volt battery for a long time, because these capacitors take time to charge. When they charge over time, you're going to see the charge build up quickly and kind of level off. And when it discharges, it does the same thing. It kind of dumps the charge and levels out. And we're not going to worry about charging times in this video, but we may do that with a later one. So we have 12-volt battery. We're going to figure out the charge after it's been on for a long time, so it's fully charged, and how much energy it's got stored, plus the electric field between the plates. So we first need to figure out how much area we got to deal with. So we've got an area that we have to deal with. So it's two by three. So we've got six square meters of material. And we want to figure out the capacitance. So capacitance is equal to that dielectric constant, which for a vacuum is one. The vacuum permeability of space area divided by separation. So that's going to be 1, so I'm not going to worry about it. 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Area is 6, and the gap is 2 millimeters, so that's 0 0.002 meters. we got to make sure everything's in meters. So we're going to calculate that. 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 times 6 divided by 0 0.002 gives me 2.6, what's called 6, times 10 to the minus 8 farads. That's our capacitance. Now that we know that, Let's look and see if we can figure out the charge. 
C equals Q over V. We know C is 2.66 times 10 to the minus 8 farads. We just figured that out. Charge we don't know, but we plugged it into a 12-volt battery. Times 12 gives us a charge of 3.19 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. So that's how much charge that capacitor has on it. And that charge is on each plate. So we have a positive version of that on the positive plate and a negative version of that on the negative plate. So sometimes we just call that the absolute value of the charge. For the potential energy, well, since I know all this stuff, I'm actually going to use QV, just that one. So we've got one half of 3.19 times 10 to minus 7, and the voltage was 12 volts. So 3.19, x point so negative, times 12, gives me a potential energy of 1.9. Let's call it 1 times 10 to the minus 6 joules of energy stored on that capacitor. So for the electric field between the two plates, let's see if I can squeeze it in here. Electric field is equal to the charge divided by the vacuum permeability and area. So the charge is 3.19 times 10 to the minus 7. Vacuum permeability is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And our area was 6. So divide those things. So 3.19 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. We're also going to divide that by 6, which is the voltage. And so we've got an electric field of 6,007.5 newtons per coulomb in between those two plates. Let's do one more where we kind of do it backwards and see if we can find other things. This is pretty much straight through the problem. So we got a parallel plate capacitor, okay? So we've got a battery connected to our parallel plate. So a simple circuit with just a capacitor looks something like that. Again, the long side's positive, short side's negative. We have a charge of four coulombs when the plates have five joules of energy stored. Okay, and we want to figure out the potential difference, the capacitance, and the area of the plates. Knowing from the information we got up here and that they're separated by one millimeter. All right, so since I've got the energy, I want to start off with it. U equals one half. Now, we've got two things we can do. We can do charge and potential difference or capacitance and potential difference squared. But well, we do have a charge, so I'm going to start off with that one. QV. So that's 5. 1 half, the charge was 4. And so we find the voltage difference, or potential difference. So the voltage is 2.5 volts between the two plates. Okay, so we got that part done. That checked off. Now figure out the capacitance. Well, since we don't have the area, we can't use that one that says capacitance equals the vacuum permeability area over separation. But we can use this. C equals Q over V. We know the charge is 4 coulombs. 
and we know the voltage is 2.5 volts. So we can figure out the capacitance. 4 divided by 2.5. We get 1.6 farads as the capacitance of this capacitor that we got in our circuit. Okay? Now figure out the area of the plates. How big is this capacitor you have, have to be in order to have that much energy, that charge, with that spacing. So now we can use C equals K epsilon naught area over, area over distance. So again, we're going to use a vacuum, so K is 1. So that's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Our capacitor was 1.6 farads. We don't know the area, but we know the separation is one millimeter. So, 1.6 times 0 0.001 divided by 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 gives me an area of 1.85 let's call it 1, we'll round up a little bit, times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 square meters. 3, 6, 7, 8, yeah. So, we've got, let's see, that's a kilometer over there, and then, oh, this is huge. But yeah, there's a lot of area that you need to have a very large capacitor, especially one that's 1.6 farads. So that's actually a lot of material put in there, especially since we're using a vacuum as a dielectric. That's why dielectrics are important. It allows us to shrink these things down and make them a little bit smaller. All right, well, thank you for watching the video about capacitance. Uh, tune in again. We'll do capacitors in series and in parallel and figure out the voltage and charge on each one as well as uh, circuits that's got resistors and capacitors mixed together. Thank you. Turn in again. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Goodbye.